Get it guys, Mackie with the Outer Circle, and welcome to the Ultramarines. The Ultramarines are one of the strongest legions in 30k. They have access to morale that most legions can only dream of, rivaled only by probably the Salamanders and the Wordbearers. But basically, morale-wise, you're not going to break them. The legion special rules are pretty solid. The first rule they have is interlocking tactics, which is when an Ultramarines unit shoots at a unit which has already been shot by another Ultramarines unit that phase, you get to reroll ones on your penetration and to wound rolls, which can be very strong. You imagine like a five-man squad of destroyers, for example, deep strikes in with jump packs, fires a few bolt pistols into a squad, and then your unit of 10 Volkite heavy support marines turns around, uh, turns around and aims at them. Threes to hit, twos to wound with a reroll. You're going to cause casualties. <laughs> it's, it is brutal. Um, very good for things like Solar Auxilia, and yeah, you can cause a lot of mayhem with that special rule. He's very strong. And the fact that it also applies to vehicles, I've seen a squad, uh, in fact, it was a Pravian console, fire a single bolt pistol shot into a Spartan tank, and then a 10 man Laz Cannon squad started shooting up the Spartan tank. Because, as rules as written, just got a hit don't have to actually be able to hurt or damage the vehicle so yeah bit of a bullshit rule but not overpowered strong but not overpowered they have another rule called certainty and resolve ultramarines always take their regroup and fear tests at an unmodified leadership of 10. remember what i was saying about strong with morale this is where it comes in now if the ultramarines lose their warlord then every unit without an attached independent character must take an immediate pinning test. On top of that, if the opponent manages to kill all of your HQs, then they actually gain a victory point. All this really means though is just bring an extra HQ or two. It's worth it. Um, and attaching units to characters and such, also worth it. When it comes to war gear, there's a Relic Gladius which is kind of pathetic basically a plus one strength rending power sword and you get plus one initiative in a challenge and you ignore the saves that people get from shields in theory that's pretty good because units like storm shields that kind of thing yeah you can ignore their storm shields however most units that have storm shields are things like terminators or their units that are wearing artificer armor anyway, so they've got a two up save, so your power sword isn't going to do jack or shit. There's also the Legantine Axe, or Legatine Axe. It's pretty overpowered. It's an AP2 strength user power axe uh, that fights at initiative. It is a specialist weapon though, so you won't get plus one attack for having a bolt pistol in the other hand. But if you had, say, a Legatine Axe and a Power Fist, or a Chain Fist, or a Paragon Blade, then you would get plus one attack. You do pay the points for it. It's a pretty strong weapon. And, oh yeah, little bonus that it has. Whenever you roll a 6 to hit, just automatically wounds at AP2. 
So yeah, pretty broken, pretty broken weapon. Um, the only thing that comes close to this is the Blade of Salty Tears from the Blood Angels. And that's about it. No other Legion has this kind of OP thing. Maybe the Power Glaive of the White Scars, but even then, you're not getting like specialist weapon bonuses and additional attacks from it, and it doesn't automatically wound on you to hit rolls. So yeah. Uh, there's also another thing called the Mantle of Ultramar. It's a type of armor upgrade for your Praetor if you want it. Gives you immunity to blind and 5 plus feel no pain. Yeah, it's not bad. Feel no pain's good. Um, the problem with Praetors is they usually end up in challenges, and in challenges, one of you usually has a Power Fist or a Thunder Hammer or a Paragon Blade. And Well, they're not very forgiving weapons when it comes to uh, feel no pain, because they usually double your strength or instant death. Oh, sorry, double your toughness or instant death. Also, Ultramarine's Breaches uh, can also take Power Swords. Yeah, I don't know that I'd recommend it. I think the models look great, and I do suggest using those later on. But yeah, they're, they're Power Swords. It's just a waste of points. Too many points on the unit. Breaches are already expensive, and if you're playing outside of Zone Mortalis, they're not really worth it. The only Legions I want to see use Breaches outside of Zone Mortalis are the Iron Hands, because they're so bloody tough, the Imperial Fists, because they're so bloody tough, and the Thousand Suns, because they're so bloody tough. In the case of the Iron Hands, it's minus one strength to all weapons that shoot at them. In the case of the Imperial Fists, they're toughness five, and in the case of the Thousand Suns, they can have a four plus in in combat, five plus out of it. So all three of those are strong, but regular breaches of power swords, I would not say so, especially because they start to sort of close in on the points of one of the specialist units, the Invictorus Suzerians. Speaking of which, specialist units. The Invictorus Suzerians. One of the most overpowered units in the game, pretty safe to say. So come with the Legatine Axe, that's that AP2 at initiative power axe, because fuck you, that's why. Uh, what else do they have? Oh yeah, they can change those axes for Thunder Hammers if they so want. One or two in the squad comes in handy. Uh, they can also change their pistols for Plasma Pistols. I don't really recommend it. Um, they all have Artificer Armor, so they've all got two plus saves. Oh, they're all Weapon Skill 5. Oh, and they all have Boarding Shields, so they count as having Assault and Defense Grenades. Which means that if you charge them, you don't get your plus one charge bonus, basically. Um, Oh yeah, they're not bulky, so you can put them in things like rhinos, because of course you can. Um, they also grant uh, friendly allies from, say, Solar Auxilia, Imperialis Militia, that kind of thing, within 12 inches, plus one leadership, as long as you aren't pinned or falling back, which, again, with Ultramarine's morale, very unlikely. Oh, and you can take them to replace your command squad, and you can swap one of them out for a standard if you do so, because of course you can. Um, he loses his boarding shield, but he keeps his axe. So, yeah. Fucking overpowered. Formentarius Terminators. So, people may remember back to the Iron Warriors and their Siege Terminators, the Siege Tyrants. Well, this is basically your Ultramarine's equivalent. This is one of those rare units you get in the Heresy, which is sort of becoming more common, where the more models you have, the more special rules the unit unlocks. So you start out at having, um, like, you know, normal Terminators, and then at three models you get one bonus, then at five you get another bonus, at seven you get another bonus, that kind of thing. They also have uh, Night Vision, what else? Oh, all of them can take Cyclone Missile Launchers, or all of them can take Auto Cannons. They all come equipped with Power Mauls as standard. Um, they can take power fists as an upgrade. Starts to get pretty pricey though. Uh, this is a pricey unit. No matter what way you cut it, they are going to cost more than siege tyrants. They are ballistic skill five though. So a squad of these guys used wisely with say cyclone missile launches in your back line, using that ultramarine special rule of rerolling ones to wound or ones for armor pen, and the fact you're hitting on twos. You can really use these guys to soften up a lot of the medium armor vehicles, that kind of thing. I'm not including them in today's list because, well, there's no models for them yet. 
yeah, you could probably take Siege Tyrant Terminators and convert them up, but that's a lot of effort. These are getting started lists. Another unit available to you is the Locutaris Storm Squad, basically assault marines with artificer armor, kind of like veterans, vanguard veterans in 40k were, that kind of thing. Yeah, nothing too crazy about them. In fact, they're kind of a weaker unit. You have a special character Contempt of Dreadnought, Telemechorus. Yeah, he's alright. Uh, there's also Captain Remus Ventanus, who's pretty much just a Centurion with a couple of bonuses. Not too bad. So, with all that in mind, well, why don't we get started on some units? So we'll start with the game's workshop miniatures. I like the Master of the Chapters, or the Masters of the Chapter. Either way, a bit dyslexic today, I think. Now, these guys, these give you a wide, uh, wide variety of units which you could use as your HQs. You can cover off a few things like Champions, Praetors, that kind of thing. Completely up to you what you pick. Maybe this guy in the back here with his axe, that could count as uh, one of the Legatine Power Axes, and you could give him, say, an Ultramarine's Boarding Shield instead of the Storm Shield. That's an option. This chap out the front here with the Power Fist and Sword, maybe that's a Paragon Blade and Power Fist combo. It's up to you, really, what you pick. But all in all, good set of characters, and if you change out the backpacks for something heresy, they pretty much will blend straight into any heresy army. There is nothing that's too crazy or 40k on them. Another Ultramarines item from Games Workshop is this little upgrade pack. Yeah, look, it's cheap over in the UK and USA, not so much in Australia. The torso is not bad for if you're kit bashing together a character. I think the best two things in it are the two little Gladius style swords. That's about it, really. You can't use too much else out of this kit. Maybe the bare head and this crested helmet down here, but the others are just simply 240k. In my opinion, if you do something good with it, I'm sure people won't complain. Also, Ultramarine Chaplain Cassius. Perfectly fine to use in a 30k army, because he's in the appropriate type of armor. You just want to get rid of, uh, say, the Crozius with the Tyranid head, maybe swap it out for another weapon. Just cut his hand off at the wrist and put in whatever you like. But he's wearing Mark IV and it's stylized Ultramarine Mark IV. So again, we'll blend right into a 30k army. When it comes to your characters, the Legion Champion and the Master of Signal, both pretty solid options. In fact, for the Master of Signals, you can take a Damocles Command Rhino as a dedicated transport. I do suggest doing this. Um, you can create some interesting little power combos with them if you so desire, because he doesn't have to be the only guy who rides in it. You can attach a squad to him, or he can hop out. Someone else, like this champion, can hop in with his squad, because it will seat six people, and drive around the battlefield causing mayhem that way. For upgrades for your characters, there is this fantastic little upgrade set, because basically they're ultramarines, the spiritual leads, you get all the love. This is helmets, torsos, all that kind of thing. And there's also another variety available, which is the Invictorus torsos and, of course, Invictorus helmets. So all these little parts, really great for stylizing characters within your force. Don't have to use them, but they're a welcome addition if you want them. Also, there is a limited edition console available at Forge World itself. Thing is, though, it's uh, this image I had to get off a friendly recasting site because, well, the only way to get it is at events through Forge, all that kind of thing, and I don't even know if they make it anymore. I know that the Pravian and that have been discontinued. In theory, you could kit bash one together and make a very similar banner using the little uh, banner tokens that come on Gilliman, the Primarch's base, if you didn't want to use them on him. So, you know, there are ways around it. Maybe you could use some etched brass or some symbols, and you can come up with something if you're inventive. You don't have to crack the shits and go to a recaster if you can't get a hold of it. So anyway, moving on from there. Contemptor, because always. Apothecaries, because they're a force multiplier. In every army you use them in, they will buff your forces. 
They're one of the most common things I recommend for melee armies, like I did with the World Eaters and I'll do with the Ultramarines, because you have such strong melee units, you want to spend a few little points to get the most out of them and that extra survivability. In particular, I'm talking about these guys, the Invictorus Caesarean. Yes, this is that overpowered cheese squad I was talking about earlier that come with all the bells and whistles. 2 plus armor saves, weapon skill 5, give morale bonuses to friendly units, all that kind of thing. Oh yeah, AP2, add initiative axes that automatically cause wounds on 6s to hit. Not overpowered at all this unit, no no no. Well balanced comrade, da. Um, yeah, squad of 5 of them, definitely not overpowered. You could take them as a command squad to a Praetor, or you could take a squad of 5 on foot, uh, attach them to, say, Master of Signal, and maybe put them into a vehicle that I'll bring up later. Speaking of vehicle options for them, dedicated transport, Land Raider Armoured Proteus. You can put them in the Spartan, yes. You do that though, and you have Assault Ramps. It's starting to become a bit of a dick move. You're giving the other guy no chance to react to this really strong unit. It's sort of an I win button. And it, it doesn't mean that you will win all your games. Anyone who's got a wick of sense will beat you, but if you're new to this and you're learning things, I don't suggest going straight to the Spartan. Just start out with the Land Raider for them, put them in the Land Raider, it'll be better off for it. Of course, as always, the Ultramarines Task Force, Betrayal at Kelth Box. Again, don't need to buy the torsos and helmets and all this kind of thing, you could just buy the box on its own and paint them blue, you'll be fine. A additional bonus, Patrol at Kelth was designed with Ultramarines in mind, so you do actually get Ultramarines decals in the box. So you don't have to go out and buy separate decals in theory. When it comes to the troops, you can buy Ultramarines Praetorian Breacher Upgrade Set. So this is something that you can put onto your standard Betrayal at Kelth Space Marines. If I bring them back up. You can put these onto these normal marines. It just replaces their current arms with these ones. You use the same shoulder pads, same torso, same helmet, same legs, all that. But you get these pretty cool Roman style shields and the gladiuses. And a legatine axe. Just because fuck you, that's why. And you can buy the squad separate as well from Forge World with all the parts you need to make them straight out of the bat. Up to you if you do so. I do think they look very good though. Oh, and like I said earlier, I wouldn't really run them with the power weapons, just a, an axe on the sergeant, that's about it. So for transports, yep, rhinos. Rhinos for all your tactical marines. Give them some versatility, let them move around the battlefield. Simple. Now, the long range support spearhead. This little bundle I've chucked in because I think it's fantastic value for money for you. The predator tank, well you won't use it with the twin laser cannon on top, I'll tell you that right now. But you can build it with the auto cannon heavy bolters or auto cannon las cannons. The Scorpius is a solid heavy support choice anyway, and the Derrideo gives you a good solid choice in your heavy support slot that gives you anti air firepower. The Damocles Rhino you can take as a separate HQ or as a dedicated transport for your Master of Signals. Now, as I was saying earlier, a five man Invictorous Caesarian squad attached to a character riding in that. Why not? You can do it. As for the Predator, you can also buy more later on and make a full-fledged Predator Squadron. They're not that common in the Heresy. Um, well, they are in the fluff, but people don't tend to use them because they're not the greatest unit. But again, if you're making an Invictorous Suzerian bomb, I don't think people um, will appreciate it too much, so you probably want to try and stay away from the more powerful units in heavy support. Like you start filling up heavy support with Sikaran battle tanks and the Arcus Sikaran, you're going to start making people a bit frustrated to play you. Not saying you can't, not saying there's anything wrong with being a bit of a power gamer. Um, that's not my thing, and especially if you're starting out in this game, try and stick to those more basic units. Lastly, yeah, the Sikaran Venator. Sikaran Venator is an anti-tank option, not saying you have to include it, but again, if you don't take some of these, like say the Predator in heavy support, this is a pretty solid choice for anti-tank. 
and that's entirely what it's there for. Again, it's not like the Arcus, which is just a fuck you to everything tank. Um, these th these things are pretty well balanced. They're strong, but they're very, very few shots. Um, and the main gun is an ordnance weapon, so everything else starts snap firing. Now, we're pretty much at the end of the episode for the Ultramarines, but I will point out a few really good little things I have. First, of course, your transfers and decals. A very good set will look after you nicely, especially combined with all the little Ultramarine symbols and that you get with Betrayal of Kelp. You also get some fancy banners and some other stuff you can stick on doors. As always, I know not everyone is absolutely thrilled about uh, using decals because, you know, decal film, they can be hard to apply, yada yada. Some people like little symbols they can paint up, and they do exist as well. You can buy these Ultramarines icons at Forge World and stick them all over your tanks. On top of that, there's also the option of Ultramarines doors for your rhinos, bonnets and doors. Um, there's also this Land Raider one, but as always with the Land Raider one, it's designed for a 40k Land Raider, not a 30k one. The doors will not fit most 30k vehicles, only the front hatch, so I do not suggest getting it. Uh, and lastly, the Ultramarines Rhino rear door. Sort of a forgotten one, but three of these rear doors and maybe a couple of these side doors, and you can kit out all of your 30k Rhinos, so they look very sexy, very legion. Don't have to, but I think it's a viable option. So, just to cover back off on it. Champion and Master of Signals. Some upgrades of some description. The Herald, if you can get a hold of one, because he can be used as Remus Ventanus. A Contemptor Dreadnought, because always take a Contemptor. Apothecaries. Invictus Suzerian. A transport option for them, which is a dedicated transport, in this case a Land Raider Armoured Proteus. A Betrayal at Kelth set. Possibly some upgrades to create breaches out of your Betrayal at Kelth, or buy them separate on top of the Betrayal at Kelth. Some Rhinos for all those Betrayal at Kelth Marines to ride around in, because mobility is key in 30k. You need to claim the objectives, you can't just sit on your side of the board. Even Iron Warriors don't get to do that every game. The Long Range Support Spearhead Detachment. Buy them separately or buy them at a bit of a discount in a bundle. Sell the Predator off if you don't want it. Up to you. The Sikran Venator because it's a strong anti-tank option for you. It's a fast vehicle as well so it can get where you need it to be. Decals, icons, doors. Anyway, I'm back with the Outer Circle. I hope you've all enjoyed the Ultramarines episode. Um, there is so much stuff available to the Ultramarines. It does make it hard to get through it all in a clear, concise manner. And some people probably say, oh, you're being a bit over the top about how strong Invictus are. Yeah, I could be, but it's all born of experience, my friends. They are a very, very strong force. Um, the only things I think are scarier in Heresy are probably Mechanicum, Custodes, and Thousand Suns. And when it comes to Thousand Suns, well, a couple weeks away, but we'll get there, straight after Death Guard. Anyway, next episode is going to be the Death Guard in a couple of days' time, and I hope to see you all there. See you all next time.